why the four Dons didn't anticipate Michael's reaction. The death of Don Vito Corleone was followed by the death of each of the heads of the New York's five families. The promise he had made to keep the peace was presumed by all families to be upheld by his successor, but upon his death, the atmosphere in the Corleone family house turned dark, and Michael, having gained the boss seat, had no intentions of keeping his father's promise. Instead, he would seek vengeance after his father's death by executing the heads of all the other crime families. It was like watching dominoes fall, but instead of dominoes, it was the most ruthless heads of New York's four crime families, and scores of viewers saw it coming. So it is truly a head-scratcher that none of the other families anticipated what to everyone else was plain and apparent. Is there a reason to believe the other families should have suspected this betrayal? The answer is a resounding yes. They too saw it coming, or at least that's what I would like to believe. Prior to what is undoubtedly the most significant point in Michael's life, his rite of passage into the mob, the four Dons must have surmised that if anyone were to take revenge in Vito's place, it would be his successor. Some of you may say this is a no-brainer. However, we must recall one basic fact. Everyone in the Mafia knows that they are always in someone's crosshairs. Almost without exception, the death of a mobster is early and violent, and although an early death may have been less likely for a mob boss, it was nevertheless an accepted fact that there could always be a target on their back. To be sure, the rival Dons would look in only one direction for any retribution sought in the attempt on Don Vito's life, as well as for the death of his eldest son. Upon his ascent to power, the next godfather would undoubtedly put a contract out on them. This shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone, least of all to the mob bosses. I think it's safe to say that this is one eventuality that is quite literally a foregone conclusion. Being marked for death is to be expected. This is organized crime, after all. No one in the mob, let alone the mob bosses, ever fools himself into thinking he would die a quiet, peaceful death, or even a death of little consequence. Mob bosses are men who mattered, and as such, they had accepted that brutal death is the ultimate price to pay for all that money and power. For Barzini, Tatalia, Stracci, and Cugno, the knowledge of this basic fact of inevitably being murdered was always in the foreground. It was never a question of if or when, but by whom. The thing is, it seems to me that the furthest one from their minds to be appointed as the new godfather after Don Vito's death was Michael Corleone. Well, almost all of them. If you recall, Michael killed one of New York City's finest, police captain Mark McCleskey. This was the rite of passage wherein Michael gunned down Saluzzo and McCleskey in the Bronx. And it is Barazzini who may have been the only one of the rival bosses to have known. Yes, I realize that everyone thinks otherwise, but think about it for a minute. Barzini was the only one who made an attempt on Michael's life while Michael was in Sicily. Imagine Barzini's sense of urgency to quell this threat. And he almost did. Barzini came so close to having Michael assassinated in Sicily, but instead of killing him, he only succeeded in blowing up a car, along with Michael's young wife, Apollonia. Barzini felt it was bound to happen, though. Because come to think of it, wasn't Tessio practically Barzini's inside man? All that was needed now for Barzini to put an end to this threat once and for all was the right occasion. The other bosses probably did not have Barzini's remarkable insight. Well, it was more than likely that Tatalia was oblivious to any potential Michael Corleone had as a ruthless mobster. I could even say the same for Stracci and Cugno, although the degree to which they lacked this awareness may have been a lot less. I guess we will never know for certain whether Barzini was the only one who guessed Michael was behind the gunning down of McCleskey. After all, he and Tatalia may have conspired to eliminate Don Vito Corleone, but it is not clear that Barzini shared all his decisions or exchanged all his suspicions with the man. Because as it turns out, Tatalia seemed to be held in rather low regard among the other Mafia Dons. He was simply a pimp in Don Vito's mind. Chances are that Barzini may have felt the same way. Be it as it may, the chances that the four bosses thought the youngest Corleone had the resources to carry out assassinations in rapid succession on not just two or three, but on all four of the mob world's most formidable figures were in my mind rather slim. It bears pointing out, once again, that all the significant players in La Cosa Nostra believed Don Vito's promise would likely expire along with him, and that whosoever is appointed to take his place would play the role of godfather the way Don Vito had with certain vengeance. I think we can all agree that Michael, upon being appointed the Corleone seat of power, was a complete surprise to the other families. After all, everyone saw him as Don Vito's straight-laced son. 
Michael, the youngest Corleone who enlisted in the military, who risked his life fighting in the Second World War, a picture-perfect law-abiding citizen. It isn't very hard to imagine, then, that they also shared another poor perception of Michael, one held by his older brother, Sonny. On the night before Don Vito arrived home for his birthday, Sonny declared to everyone at the dinner table that his little brother's enlisting in the military had upset him. He thought Michael should never have gone off to war, and because of this, Sonny thought Michael was just a chump, a fool, risking his life in a war that didn't even involve the family, at all. This begs to question, could any of the Dons even think that someone like Michael, someone they deemed not a threat at all, could possibly orchestrate the execution of the four most successful, most powerful, and most feared of all men in New York City's mafia?